Enhance the enjoyment and training effectiveness of your cycling by avoiding, at all costs, these pre-ride mistakes. Don't do it, or do it. Now this is a classic mistake that we've all made at some point in our cycling career. Filling up on too much breakfast before a ride, leaving us feeling bloated, nauseous and in no fit state to train effectively at all. I mean, Matt, I, I thought I ate a lot of breakfast, but that is just incredible. Are you sure that's a good idea? Ideally, you shouldn't eat anything for around two to three hours before a ride, which is generally something that's easy to stick to when you're doing a race or a sportif or when you're training later in the day, as you'll have had sufficient time to eat earlier. Things get a little bit trickier when you're training first thing in the morning, as the zone between getting up and riding is that much narrower. That's why keeping a close eye on the timing of your nutrition is important, as our digestive system isn't quite as effective on the exercise as it is at rest. This is because the blood flow for our gastrointestinal system is redirected to our leg muscles when riding. So if you have a large meal without sufficient time to digest it, then you might run into problems. Yeah, precisely. So if you have less than an hour to eat your food before heading out on the bike, you need to get it right to avoid running into gut problems. One idea is to postpone breakfast altogether, which is something that has become popular over recent years and is known as fasted training. Another is to eat something relatively small and light, but that will provide us with a solid fuel source. Porridge is the classic example. If you do choose the fasted route, just make sure you've eaten plenty of carbohydrates as part of your evening meal the night before and ensure that you eat as soon as you get back. Now this sort of training is more suited to rides of a shorter duration, so you don't deplete your glycogen stores too much. Thirty minutes or so into a four hour ride on a long descent with your mates isn't a great time to realise that your brake blocks are worn out. It certainly isn't. Or for that matter, that your gear cable has frayed to the point of snapping and you can't get into the big ring, or sticking with gears, if you haven't charged your ETAP or DI2. Uh, Matt, uh, not looking great here, sorry. Um. Or you have a rear tyre blowout because you didn't check the big cut in the sidewall of your tyre before you came out on the ride. Sorry. Emma. To avoid these sorts of problems that range from the inconvenient to the potentially catastrophic, just make sure you get into the habit and the routine of giving your bike the good once over when you get home. And by that we mean just a quick visual inspection of tyres, brakes, gears, bikes moving parts, just to make sure that everything is ship shape in good working order before your next ride. If you don't check your bike, you might get a fright. <laughs> I forgot my lure roll! The state of utter panic of needing to do a number two whilst out riding with no toilet or bathroom on the horizon really is the stuff of nightmares. And again, many of us have been there, forced to take a call of nature, quite literally, surrounded by nature. I mean, it happens to the very best riders in the world. Take Tom de Moulin's exploits at the 2017 Giro d'Italia as an example. To be fair though, Matt, I, I think that was a one-off and I think usually Tom would have had a normal number two in good time before the stage start, you know, queuing at the portaloos or cafe toilets with the other pros. Yeah, that's because they're acutely aware of their body's well, cycles, shall we say. And you should be aware of yours too uh, and factor it into your preparation. Now the problem often arises when you're cycling at really early hours of the day, so a sportif or a grand fondo. So that's something you definitely need to consider. And also make sure you pack loo roll in your kit bag as well. And our final word on the subject, if you are the kind of person that regularly gets caught out by a call of nature, why not pack some toilet paper or tissues or wet wipes in your pocket or your saddlebag so that if you do get caught out, your sensitive areas are not uh, damaged by nettle rash, shall we say. Hmm, one way of putting it. Have you ever headed out on a training ride when you're not really feeling up for it? And I don't mean not really fancying hurting yourself on a climb, for example. I mean generally feeling tired and fatigued. Perhaps you told yourself to HTFU after coming back from a cold. Is that really a good idea, though? I mean, have you ever stopped to ask why your body is making you feel that way? Yeah, possibly 
a reason. It could be because your immune system is on the edge after you've come back from a cold or an illness, just a bit too quickly. Or that those previous three days of back-to-back high-intensity training sessions have taken their toll. Yeah, don't be afraid of listening to your body and honestly making a judgment call on whether it's a good idea to go training at all. If in doubt, turn around and head home. Or best of all, don't leave the house and take a well-earned rest. It's a far better option than risking your health by overtraining or making worse an illness that your body hasn't fully recovered from. Yeah, have you ever heard of taking a day off ruining a whole season? No, neither have we. This really applies when you're heading out on the road to do some specific efforts, like hill reps, intervals or sprints, for example. Yeah, or it could be a session on the indoor trainer, or basically any sort of session where you're going to go very deep and into the red. A warm-up will allow your body to get to the point it can effectively cope with the training intensity. Not only will it help you to perform better, but it will also protect your body from potential injury. So, as part of any ride that contains intense efforts, no matter how short, prime your body by doing a progressive warm-up to get your system firing, increasing vital blood flow, lifting your temperature and elevating your heart rate so fully oxygenated blood reaches your muscles. Ride hard without a warm-up and you risk a torn muscle, oxygen debt and non-optimised training. It's just not worth it. Emma, can you just ease off? I've not, not warmed up yet. Just tone it down. Easy, what a progressive warm-up. Well, you should have warmed up before we left. Just, well, Just get up too late, don't I'll you? Go on your own then. Well, we certainly hope you picked up something handy from that video, but what we'd like to know is, what are your classic pre-ride training mistakes? Leave your comments down below. And for five training myths exploded with Louis Passfield, click here. And don't forget to like and share.